Hi guys, this is GSNO.com and I'm here with the Motorola Moto G50 for a full review. The most affordable 5G Motorola phone launched over the past year or so. It's priced only $200 and for that amount you're getting 5G connectivity and also I would say um, starting mid-range package. I'm talking about the Qualcomm Snapdragon 480 5G processor which is the first time I'm testing on this occasion and at the same time a triple back camera plus you're also getting a good looking backside and a generous battery that's the selling point of the device the battery and it comes in a beautiful steel gray version here it was launched in april so let's go first of all it's made of plastic the backside is covered with plastic and the frame is plastic as well the device is surprisingly ergonomic so it's very easy to wheel with a single hand i would say it's narrow enough and uh, these buttons are pretty responsive the power volume and extra google assistant button the sides are a bit flat which help with the grip and the back camera is familiar if you've seen a device which is part of the moto g9 series before as usual motorola is offering us a water repellent coating on the case and the thickness is pretty beefy at 9 millimeters and the weight is i would say decent at 192 grams the build is quite fine and in case you want to protect the back side from scratches and prints there's a bundled case which you saw in our unboxing for the device there's also an old school teardrop notch at the top side and a pretty large uh, chin at the bottom side now getting past the design we are met here with the display in this case we're dealing with a 6.5 inch ips lcd the resolution is hd plus or better said 1600 over 720 pixels and the core point of the screen is the fact that it has 90 hertz refresh rate it has been borrowed this panel from the moto g 30 in case it sounds familiar and this is the viewing experience i would say that the teardrop notch eats from the image a little bit here on this side and it's definitely a screen which doesn't have very generous viewing angles you have to look it dead on uh, from the front it's also not very good in the sunlight poor contrast and poor uh, legibility when the sun is pretty strong not the brightest definitely but indoors it's fine the colors are pretty realistically calibrated if not a bit gray for my taste and the pixels have an rgb stripes arrangement now let's see how the device did in our brightness test actually not that good it's towards the bottom of all of the phones we've tested we've tested the uh, 415 and this is placed on the 412th spot definitely not very flattering at 220 lux units it only beats older phones like those from coolpad iHand, and the xperia e4 uh, and it's below rivals with similar prices like the uh, for example uh, redmi 9c nfc which is actually cheaper the poco m3 and the biggest rival is the redmi note 90 which is brighter than this model and if you want to do tweaks uh, you can go to the settings app then you can press display and aside from the brightness font pick display and all that there's also colors where you can opt for natural saturated or boosted depending on what you like so so far the screen feels a bit underwhelming and then we go further and discover the power of the cpu we have here the qualcomm snapdragon 480 uh, it's actually the 485g as it's also known it's an 8 nanometer cpu octa core uh, accompanied in this case by 4 gigs of ram as well as 64 or 128 gigabytes of storage there are two versions of the phone and a micro sd card slot is also here i'm happy to inform you there is no lag we and we even played the pubg mobile without having too much hassle so that's fine there's also no overheating and when it comes to benchmarks let's see just how well we did so i'm going to start off with antutu 8 and in antutu 8 we're just above galaxy a71 which is not a bad company to keep and above the samsung galaxy a32 5g which is samsung's cheapest 5g phone at the same time we scored below the moto g9 plus and the xiaomi mi note 10 which are also held in high regard this is the geekbench test we scored above the redmi note 8 pro which is uh, was for a period a landmark in the mid-range gaming department we also beat the realme 8 pro and the galaxy a32 5g i would say these are better than expected results and the cpu is really proving itself 
in 3D Mark Snapshot Extreme ES 3.1, as you can say, as you can see here, we beat the Galaxy A80, which back in the day was supposed to be a flagship replacement from the mid-range department, once again beating the Xiaomi Redmi Note 8 Pro, so definitely a solid CPU, which uh, seeing something from this Snapdragon 400 series achieve that really puzzles me in the best way possible. On the temperature front, we also did a bunch of measurements and you can see them here in benchmarks 34.8 degrees Celsius, not bad. And in games 37.7 degrees Celsius, once again, no dangers of overheating here. Now this device, if you feel that it's too thick or bulky, is for a good reason. It has a 5000 mAh battery with 15 watt charging. And uh, as usual, we have quite a few tests for the battery. First of all, we have the video playback, which is quite impressive. We achieved 19 hours and 13 minutes of continuous uh, HD video playback, which puts us above the Motorola Edge and Galaxy A71, and also above the Samsung Galaxy S10 Lite, just one of the examples of the phones we surpassed. Okay, so with this result here, we also beat the Poco X3 NFC, which is actually pretty close price-wise to this phone, but we stayed below the Moto G30 and the Realme 7 Pro, for example, also close to this price range. When it comes to continuous usage and even better result, uh, it's 12 hours and 30 minutes, this is a more intensive usage, and with this value, we surpassed phones like the OnePlus Nord N10 5G or the Huawei P40 Lite 5G, which is also a rival for this device. We stayed below the Poco M3, Vivo Y70 and the Poco X3 Pro. Charge is a bit on the long side at 2 hours and 22 minutes and after 30 minutes you are at only 25% so uh, not good enough to leave home after 1 hour you are at 49% which is more like it. Uh, aside from that we have some battery saver features which are pretty classic and stock and you can easily uh, find them in uh, well the settings department. When it comes to acoustics, the device provides you with a singular speaker here and an audio jack here, so that's that. And I think it's time to put them to the test. We have some special options like uh, extra treble, extra bass or extra voice from the settings menu, but let's check out the song. Actually not bad sounding, not bad sounding at all. I'm pretty satisfied with the volume, the high notes and the voices. The bass is lacking but not as much as you'd expect it to and the body doesn't vibrate a lot. A good thing is that even if you turn the volume all the way to the max, there's not an annoying sound which can scratch your ears on some other more affordable phones. This is actually a pretty good speaker, I have to say. Uh, and uh, we also have some volume tests here. Uh, first of all, we start with the acoustic sample test. 90.4 decibels, which is a big result nowadays. I'm seeing only 80 decibels. This is 90, so it's good. It goes past Galaxy A51, Moto G9 Plus, and the Huawei P40 Lite. Stays below the Redmi Note 90, the nemesis of this phone, and the Poco X3 NFC. In games, we're almost there, you know, 99.5 decibels. It's usually 100 to pass the test, but at least we're beating stuff like the Huawei P Smart 2021, Vivo Y70, and the Redmi Note 90. We're below the Xiaomi Mi 10 Lite 5G and the Moto G30. And finally here we are in the camera department. Here you can see a teardrop notch which hosts a 13 megapixel selfie camera which shoots full HD video. At the back side things are simpler. We only have three cameras. There's a main 48 megapixel shooter. There's a 5 megapixel macro camera and a 2 megapixel bokeh camera. There's the LED flash. The main camera combines 4 pixels in one quad pixel. It takes 12 megapixel shots and you can only shoot full HD video at 30 or 60 frames per second. There's spot color, panorama, uh, pro mode, cutout, cinemagraph and even night vision, believe it or not, which is basically code for, well, night mode. These are the camera shots I've taken, uh, not much color here, it was a pretty cloudy and dark day, but I will try to navigate around it. So these are the samples we have, we're in the eastern part of Romania, and I would say that the main sensor does a fine job when it comes to the 
details achieved by the device and these are this is a pair of selfies at the end of the day i found that the selfie camera was a bit more impressive than the back camera overall because it went above its price range with the details texture and clarity of the face so that checks out even though there's a bit of beautifying going on especially if you apply bokeh which by the way is pretty well applied cutting you from the background i would say that overall the camera the selfie camera is a surprise now back to the main one uh, we struggled a bit with close-ups and macro and the close-ups were fine but the macros were not they took a lot of attempts and in the end not a proper focus and details i'm loving the colors though uh, without the sun to overexpose everything the colors are fine they're a bit murkier and grayer than usual but in my book they're just passing the test we also have some moving photos an option which is available in the settings of the camera these are some other shots and if you want more colors we got some flowers here poorly focused that's true but in the end i would advise you to stick to close-ups with the main camera and maybe skip the macros more colors in a playground so if you go something like seven or ten centimeters far you should be able to focus properly if you get too close you probably won't i'm happy with the color calibration here things are a bit more lit up than we saw before so in general the colors and details of the main camera are fine the selfie cam is the star of the show and obviously you're not getting much zoom here we don't have a telephoto camera these are daytime shots let's see the low light ones uh, small expectations for a 200 dollar phone but somehow it delivers i know that some of the light sources are a bit are a bit uh, expanded they're a bit too big but when you activate the night mode things are actually pretty decent so there is that for example this is one of the good shots i'm happy with the clarity here the details and the colors actually can't complain too much considering the price tag the biggest complaint is actually the fact that um, every now and then the street lights are or may seem a bit too big and uh, the shots are a bit dark but that definitely can be fixed if you activate the night mode and that's one nice example of focus proper focus so that's about it that's all we have here and we have several more samples this is a regular shot which is pretty dark and the night mode solves it so there is that overall the selfie and night mode surpass its condition for a 200 dollar phone and i think it's time to also check out some videos because we also have quite a few of those so we have this app here 15 videos quite a few we have multiple stabilization tests so one thing that's common in all of those videos uh, is the fact that the sound is echoey that's one thing that uh, happens most of the time and there's also the thing that uh, it doesn't face the wind properly as you can see the image is shaky it may seem shaky now but at least there's no flicker and refocus if you're doing a 60 frames per second video capture that will definitely be shakier the good news is that the focus is spot on alternating between subjects foreground and background is fast and snappy maybe let's find a bit more color here uh, this is actually a selfie video the focus is the only thing good about it the face feels artificial uh, the color of the face is not very accurate i would say uh, not exactly vlog taking material but i'm actually shocked by how good the focus is that its main uh, selling point so far uh, we also have here a video with insects which is actually quite fine not very sure if it's taken with a macro mode or not i'm guessing not but i'm totally loving the colors and the details and if you get really close you should be amazed by what you see possibly the best video taken with this phone so colors are something where it seems to excel even though they're a bit grayer on a cloudy day check out those two small bumblebees okay so there is that we have uh, even more a second stabilization test which is actually passed in a better fashion even though there's a bit of worry focus at some point there's that i would have loved 4k capture but it just doesn't happen uh, and we also have the uh, low light video and i'm going to skip the first part because it's out of focus this is the second part of the video it's pretty dark noisy and murky it doesn't do any favors for the handset didn't expect it to perform during the night time and as you can see lost focus again and in the end 
night mode is the only good thing which you can use on this phone after darkness. Uh, it can definitely fight the Redmi Note 9T, which is its main rival, a cheap 5G phone. It can also fight the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G, which we're still testing, but that one may give it some trouble. You'll see. Okay, now let's talk about connectivity. This one is a 4G and 5G handset with an USB-C 2.0 port at the bottom here and at the same time it has a Wi-Fi dual band and uh, we're also getting NFC so if you want to perform payments you can definitely do that. Aside from that we also have GPS, AGPS, GLONASS in Galileo and Bluetooth 5.0. Uh, the calls are pretty loud and clear and uh, you can also use a dual SIM setup on this device. We have dual nano SIM card slots. The calls were pretty loud and clear. No objection here. After all, Motorola invented the smartphone. So expectations were high regarding that aspect. And here we are with the speed test. Achieving solid results like in Wi-Fi 316 mega per second downloads, 262 mega per second uploads. And on 4G, uh, sadly, we don't have 5G available. It's 208 download and 56.3. Uh, upload. I would say we're doing quite fine. Once again, sad that we didn't get any 5G to properly test it. On the software front, if you've seen one review of a Motorola phone recently, you've seen them all. It's Android 11 and uh, actually it has uh, a decent Motorola UI um, applied on top of it, which is basically stock. The only thing they contributed is the Moto app, which uh, offers you tips at the same time, a way of personalizing the experience with your own custom fonts, colors, and uh, icon shapes and layout, plus wallpapers. Aside from that, we also have a bunch of gestures, quite a few of them, to make things simpler. Quick capture, fast flashlight, three finger screenshot, pick up to silence. And then we have the uh, tips which you already saw. Pick display and attentive display, keeps the screen on when you're looking at it and pick display is basically a replacement for always on display. And this is the fun section where you find the game time gaming features, audio effects. These are the gaming features They have to do with uh, do not disturb and record settings if you want to record your gameplay session. These are the audio effects and finally the media controls which can be activated easily when the screen is off. Aside from that, it's all stock Android and this is the multitasking which also includes split screen, the recent section, drop down and you're going to see notifications and quick settings. And the settings themselves are pretty straightforward. Battery display, sound, storage, privacy, security, and digital well-being and parental control. We also have this extra physical button here, which triggers the Google Assistant. And uh, if you want to unlock the phone, you just have to put your finger here and voila, it's unlocked with the backside fingerprint scanner. There's also the option of face unlock, but it's only 2D, it's not 3D or extra secure. Pre-installed apps are stock. There's no bloatware here. There's just the basic core Google package, Maps, Home, Gmail, Google, Google One, News, Podcast, Sheets, Slides, YouTube. So that's that. So I think I'm going to play a little bit of PUBG Mobile now towards the end of the review and we should be all set. Okay, so I'm playing PUBG right now and uh, I think it's time for the verdict even though I'm pretty uh, low stocked on ammo and I will probably die soon. Uh, let's talk about the pros and cons for the phone. Obviously the battery is a big one of the pros. It has, it has an excellent battery life I would say. And at the same time, uh, take some pretty good selfies to be honest. The CPU actually went above my expectations, the 8 nanometer new Snapdragon 480 processor. Uh, I would also say that the video capture in Full HD is actually not bad compared to my own expectations. Uh, we have a solid and comfy body with good ergonomics on account of the flat sides. I should probably mention that the acoustics are fine in my book, at least when it comes to the volume and uh, nice treble there and uh, voice also not half bad. Um, I would also say that stock Android is always a big plus, the water repellent coating, the audio jack, and uh, well, that's pretty much it. And the colors are not uh, exactly something to complain about. I'm talking about the colors of the pictures, except for the fact that they're a bit lifeless. So uh, there's this aspect going on here. Now, uh, as I'm venturing forward into the adventure, I finish with the pros. Let's talk about the cons. On the cons, definitely the screen. It's a bit underwhelming. If you go outdoors, it definitely cannot take the sun. 
it's a more of an indoor screen. The charging is a bit long. We don't have stereo speakers. We don't have 4K video capture. We don't have um, an ultra wide camera. And at the same time, we also do not have a telephoto camera. So we only have to do with macro and bokeh and the main sensor. Plus the fact that the speaker has no bass and um, I would say that uh, macro was a bit underwhelming, the present macro camera. So that's that. It feels like a phone which is bought for the battery. The fact you can charge it once every two or three days. You can even use it as a 5G modem. So if you get 5G, you're going to use it to deliver fast connectivity to your other phone. You can take some decent selfies to post online for sure. And maybe even some light gaming. As you can see, I'm having no trouble with PUBG. So live gaming, selfies and uh, using it as a 5G modem for other devices. That's the core idea of the Moto G50 and the price is obviously a draw point. This is it from jsn.com. Hope you enjoyed the review. This has been the review of the Moto G50 from Motorola. Bye bye.